Our recent study finds marijuana use can lead to widespread health issues, including high rates of depression, poor sleep quality, addiction, and for pregnant women, it can cause harm to their babies in the womb. The Daily Mail recently examined several medical studies into marijuana use in Denmark. Researchers found someone with cannabis use disorder was four times more likely to be diagnosed as bipolar elsewhere. There have been many antidotal reports of high-potency marijuana vapes causing psychotic breaks and suicidal thoughts. Marijuana is legal for recreational use in 21 U.S. states and the District of Columbia. We go now to Jim Wahlberg, Vice President of Community Engagement and Global Goodwill at Evoke Wellness Drug and Alcohol Rehab. Jim, great to have you on again. Uh, a lot to delve into here, but first, I want to get your reaction to the findings of this study. And why do you think more really isn't being said about the negative impact to one's health when it comes to excessive marijuana mm -hmm. use? Well, I, I have to say that I agree with the study, and I've seen similar results. Um, I mean, the reasoning behind people denying the, the study is simple. It's money. It's always money. You know, uh, it's greed. You know, uh, big tobacco is fully invested in the marijuana business now. And I love to say that we can trust them. They didn't try to kill us all already. So, yeah, the wrong people are behind this. The wrong people are pushing this. And I think there's a lot of people that are misinformed when they are encouraging people to vote for legalized marijuana. They're misinformed and they need to get informed. Yeah, and it's often been said that marijuana is a gateway drug, and, and you work with those trying to overcome addiction. Have you heard stories from folks who say, you know, they started out experimenting with pot and then moved into harder drugs? Mm. Well, not only have I experienced that with our patients at Evoke Wellness, uh, but I experienced it myself, you know? I, I like to say that not everybody that smokes marijuana is going to end up with a needle in their arm. But Nine out of 10 people that you talk to that are shooting drugs or using hard, hardcore drugs, nine out of 10 of them will tell you that they started with marijuana. Jim, what do you think this says to our young people? You know, there are a lot of teenagers out there now who think, well, you know, marijuana is legal uh, and people use it for medicinal reasons, so it, it must be safe. Yeah, that's part of the big lie, right? It's part of the big lie that, um, you know, they're also trying to convince us, the people in the marijuana business, the industry, that, you know, they're going to keep it away from children. They're going to keep children safe from it until they're legally old enough to use it when we know for a fact that they're after our children, right? Because they're the youngest customers, and the goal of the marijuana companies is to create repeat customers. Yeah, and it makes it so hard for parents. I mean, do you have any advice for parents when talking to their kids about drugs? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, I, I think that young people seem to be very engaged in a lot of issues these days, right? They, they are active politically, if you will. And I think if you explain it to, to them from the perspective of that this is a conspiracy against them, right? That this is, this is all about, you know, the powers that be trying to get money from them and really to control them. I mean, it's, it's sad that... Um, everybody now thinks that they need to be on something to stabilize their mood, to change their mood, to make them feel different, to make them feel better. You know, I don't ever want to try to sound like I don't think there are people out there that are have very great difficulties, right? But marijuana is not the solution to their difficulties. It's not the, it's not the solution to anybody's difficulty. Yeah, and so much of it is glamorized right now. We see a lot of that on social media as well. I'm curious, have there has there been any pushback? I mean, any groups speaking out against the legalization of marijuana? And if so, are they making any inroads? What have you heard? Yeah, I mean, the in in Ohio, where it's issue two on the ballot this year, um, the police benevolent association is against it. The uh, Children's Hospital Association is against it. I mean, most of the people that matter are against this, right? Because they know that it's going to end up in the hands of kids. And when it ends up in the hands of kids, you have these young people that become fully addicted. You know, the other thing that I like to mention is, is that people that are my age, my generation, I'm 58 years old. There has been marijuana for my entire life. And I, I feel as though people that are my age that are not informed are voting to legalize something that doesn't exist anymore. 
the marijuana that they smoked as young teenagers or whenever they smoked in the 70s, that marijuana doesn't exist anymore. What they're selling now is chemically and genetically altered. You walk into a marijuana store, there's 500 different types of marijuana. Yeah, it's really unbelievable. Jim, we're almost out of time, but I do want to talk about this. I know that you yourself struggled with addiction at one point. Can you talk to us about that and also how your Catholic faith helped to pull you through it? Mm. So, you know, I, I struggled with addiction. I started, I started first with cigarettes, then on to alcohol, then to marijuana, and then I jumped from marijuana to much harder drugs. Um, you know, I smoked marijuana against my own permission, if that makes sense to you. I didn't necessarily like the effects, but I became addicted to it. I needed it. I needed something to make me feel different than the way I felt. Um, and so, you know, it, how my Catholic faith helped me, it didn't just help me, it, it saved me. My difficulties spiraled out of control. I ended up in prison and uh, a Catholic priest approached me and uh, offered me a job in the chapel and ultimately introduced me to Mother Teresa and, um, you know, and prepared me to make my confirmation at 22 years old in state prison. Um, and so my faith was the catalyst, it was the key to me believing the things that I was learning in different, different groups, 12-step groups. I wasn't, I wasn't connecting for me until I was able to reconnect with my faith and with Christ. I made such a difference, Jim. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. God bless you and God bless your work, my friend. God bless you and thank you very much for having me and I hope to see you again soon.